Alright, hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lord of the Rings Online plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we switched to the Festival Buddy plugin and worked on adding midsummer quests, including a pet project of mine of incorporating Little Redhead's uh, Lotro Midsummer Festival Quick Guide into Festival Buddy, including automatically detecting when you complete an objective. So today, we're going to finalize the switch uh, from Festival Buddy to Festival Buddy 2 look for any remaining bugs, and release it so that everyone can uh, play around with this quick guide. As always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions, and in the meantime, let's get going. <laughs> Wizzik and Chad, woohoo! <laughs> yes, I know, I've, I've been spending way too much time uh, over, the, over the weekend and whatnot working on this, trying to you know, squash it last minute bugs and such. So, let's go ahead and, oh, hello Aaron Bard and chat. Let's take a look at where we are. So, um, when I prepare for a stream, I will usually uh, go into Lord of the Rings Online in my Documents folder, uh, and in the plugin uh, data, I'll clear uh, all the existing plugin data, uh, and in the plugins, I'll move everything aside that I'm not working on. That way I don't uh, accidentally edit the wrong file or, or have any uh, issues like that. And so, the things that appear in the plugin manager right now are, are just the plugins that appear in the cube plugins folder on my machine. Some of these aren't released, some of them are, are pet projects and whatnot. I should probably do something about that. But for now, uh, the, that's what we're seeing in the plugin manager. Okay. Um, Today we're going to be using Visual Studio Code to edit our Lua files. Uh, it's a free tool available online. We're also using Fork from fork.dev to wrap around our Git uh, source control repository. And that's very useful because then we can see what changes are there that are outstanding. Actually, a thing that I want to do, haven't done this yet, is to look into how to host multiple Git repositories in the same folder. Because I would kind of like to split out each of my um, plugins into its own Git repository. Uh, Deed Tracker, Minstrel, Buff, uh, well, 2, uh, now Festival Buddy 2, and, and so on. Uh, but it is very convenient for me to edit them in place in the document slash Lord of Rings Online slash plugins folder. So I think it's technically possible. I, I dug into it for uh, about 30 seconds the other day, and it's like, oh, maybe this is possible. Need to sleep before I actually try it out. But we can see we have a, a VS Code file. I'm not uh, sure I need it right yet, so I'm going to ignore it. We have some to-do file changes to do, and we have a bug that Little Redhead discovered on her stream which can cause problems. So first thing, fixed bug where incorrect options panel is specified. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and commit that. My bad. Now it was suggested, here, we'll go ahead and commit these two to do file updates. Awesome. So it was suggested uh, on Little Redhead's stream that I might want to update the UI to say Festival Buddy 2 so everyone knows what they're running. It seemed a little bit uh, grandstandy to me, but uh, who am I to, uh, to say no? So, um, what she's talking about is the title bar of the Festival Buddy window here. Uh, and if we want to change that, that's pretty easy. This is the main window of the plugin. I'm going to drag it on over here. Let's see, that thing we just fixed. Cool. That didn't crash. Awesome. Um, so, the main window here is sensibly governed by a, a file called mainwin. Oh, that's a little bit under my face. Mainwin.lua. So if we come in, in here and we do a search for festival buddy, um, we can see there's only one time. In fact, it wouldn't be bad to search for that string everywhere. Cool. Only this one location left. Uh, and this is where we can see the mainwin parent. We're setting the text. Mainwin parent is the window. And when you set the window so when you set the text of a Lotro window, you're setting what happens in that little blue bar there. At least it's blue by, uh, by default. And a lot of skins will change that up. So if we want to change that, we can just say Festival Buddy II. And 
because this is a, a built-in window class, that blue button should get bigger. Now, one thing I was thinking while Little Head, Redhead was streaming is that Festival Buddy could unload itself. There, there could be a button in option somewhere to say, I'm done. Uh, because it's a very transitory thing. You want it while you're doing festivals. You don't want it when you're not doing festivals. Um, we could add a button into the options that says, no, go away. Um, and that seems like an appealing thing. So let me add that to, to the to-do here. Add options button to unload plugin. Now, it's, it's a bit of a misnomer to say we're unloading the plugin. As we've mentioned before, uh, you can't unload a, a single plugin in Lord of the Rings Online. What you can do is unload an apartment in which that plugin sits. An apartment can have one or more plugins, but it's kind of, uh, it's not unusual for a single plugin to be the only one in that apartment. So when you tear down that apartment, the side effect is you're unloading that plugin. Uh, but you're not really. You're unloading the apartment. That happens to be the only plugin in there, so it looks like you're unloading the plugin. And the effect is it is unloaded, so it gets it to us, gets us to where we want to be. Okay, so we have written that down, so we don't have to forget about it. But that being said, this is the only plugin that is loaded right now, so unload all is synonymous to unload for me. So Festival Buddy two. Sure, let's do it. Um, so, easy enough fix. Come on in here. Uh, we can see the in the to-do. Update title, say festival buddy. Update for title, super easy. Update title to say festival buddy two. Snapshot committed. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, Little Redhead pointed out that when she customized her uh, quick guide list, and you can do that, so come on over to Midsummer, go to the quick guide, you can customize this in the options. And when you do that, any entry that is a part of that quest will disappear from the, uh, quest, uh, the quick guide. And she was mentioning that she doesn't do something misplaced, something blue. Well, fair enough. It can be a bit of a trick to find all of them. So, the problem is the step that says go to the blue theater is part of um, part of the something misplaced, something blue chain. Unfortunately, the way this is currently designed, the steps that say go to a place are just embedded in the first thing you do at that place because we can't easily detect where you are and if you have gone to a place. And my goal for this was as much as possible would automatically check off as you're doing things. So that if you want to refer to this, you can, but if you just want to go and be like, okay, did I miss anything? Uh, then you didn't have to do hardly anything at all. And so even those things that you have to check off manually if you want them to disappear right away, those things go away if you uh, turn in the quest. So, uh, or sooner if we can. So when we, you find the sixth of the uh, missing performers, Holler, Pol Holler Pola, Froki, Dana, Rabo, and uh, Gord, once you find the sixth one, we'll clear out any of the remaining ones that haven't been checked because now we know that you did them all. Um, so the goal was check off everything as much as possible, but that meant the steps of go someplace, take this stable master, uh, were very difficult to separate out because uh, I didn't have a conception of how to do that and still check them off automatically. I think I could probably make it work now. Uh, like the first thing on that tier that you're going to would retroactively check it off maybe, but uh, it's complications that we can't do right now because we're releasing this thing. That'll be a Festival Buddy 2.1 or something. So in the meantime, uh, since something misplaced something blue is a pretty common thing to do, uh, we would want to go ahead and help out with uh, where are we doing these this arranging arrangements. So probably just say in the blue theater. Um, that way, take some master players here, continue tasty morsels, and then arranging arrangements. So that would just be in the blue theater. Place three four four arrangements on stage for arranging arrangements. That's pretty easy. Let's come on in and see how we do that. So I did some restructuring of the file system in preparation for this being Festival Buddy 2 because 
when you do updates onto a plugin, you can add to files and you can uh, change existing files. But the way the installation works, especially if you're using the Lotro plugin compendium, is that it downloads the zip file and it moves that folder over, overwriting any existing files. But what it doesn't do is delete any files that have been moved or just deleted. And so when you're doing a new release like this, this is the time to kind of get your uh, directory structure in order. This is the time to name things you want to name them and put them where you want them to be. Because uh, if you move them later, it still works, but it, it makes for a more cluttered um, uh, plugin directory for anyone who has been kind of upgrading to each version along the way. So they download version 201, cool, then they download version 2.1 and that moves some stuff around. Now they have two copies of multiple files. Now you download version 2.2, 2.3 uh, and more moving, more renames, more deletions and uh, the way their directory looks is very different from a clean installation. And fingers crossed that's fine and it doesn't matter. But it feels sloppy. So. Uh, when I can, I like to address that ahead of time. But uh, we have uh, a quick guides folder now, and within that, um, on the theory that there might be more quick guides someday, there's a subfolder called Midsummer, and within that are the actual files we need. There's one language independent one. This sets up uh, a bunch of tables uh, for referencing back and forth. I don't think this is the right way to do it in the long run, but it's a way that worked right now to let me uh, get it working. Uh, I have visions in my head of a, a plugin that lets you create guides uh, kind of like this guide is, where it lets you say, hey, here's the objective, here's the text I want it to display on, on screen, I want it to advance when this quest is picked up, or this quest is dropped off, or when this quest text appears in the quest chat. Uh, I think this is something you could have a sort of a meta uh, quick guide plugin that lets you build these things in the game. But <laughs> until something like that exists, there's lots of tables. So the, then there's the language specific thing. So the quick guide steps are in a table called quick guide. Um, and in this case, I was envisioning each quick guide uh, has its own entry in the quick guide table. So this is quick guide midsummer. Uh, this is going to need to change uh, again. The, the, as soon as the next quick guide comes out, this is going to be changing dramatically. But I'm not sure the, where the next quick guide might be. Maybe it's something like Yule, where you're doing a bunch of different things simultaneously, uh, and it's easy to lose track. But uh, some uh, uh, things like Harvest Map, where you're going in and out and in and out and in and out of um, the uh, area underneath the hill. What do we call that? The Haunted Burrow, thank you, little redhead in the background. Uh, when you're going in and out of the Haunted Burrow, usually you're just doing one thing at a time. Um, specifically so, right? You, you pick up a quest and you can't get any of the other ones, um, with, with few exceptions. And so for that, it's just a question of keep doing quests until you stop wanting to do quests. And you can get all 10 of them there if you're part of the Inlake and Ale Association. So a quick guide there doesn't feel very useful other than you did it! You did all 10 quests, but you, were, you, you already had an easy counter for that, so I don't know. Um, something beyond the, the festival buddy already popping up and showing you maps and things doesn't feel necessary. So maybe Yule will be the next time. So that'll be plenty of time to, uh, to fix this. <laughs> this is a structural problem. But arranging arrangements. So we would just want to say in the blue theater, in the blue theater, place three floral arrangements on stage four. And whenever I'm quoting uh, or, or mentioning uh, quests, I like to start it in the quotes, so it's a little bit more obvious. Uh, and this is where we'll go ahead and need to replicate that in each of the other language files. Because for right now, uh, they're still in mostly English. Okay, so we want to go to this line here, and in the French one, we want to go to this line here. Okay, so it looks like I localized the name of the quest, but that was it. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and copy this over. Uh, I might make this a little bit bigger just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. 
And then we're going to go ahead and do this. And the Blue Theater plays three floor romance on stage for Schmuck for the Stadt. Great. And same thing in the French one. In the Blue Theater, it plays three four elements on stage for dispositions, the arrangements. Now this is sort of a, uh, you know, a very basic step on the way towards full localization, which is to say, if you were a French or German person playing this, you would at least see the names of the quests uh, uh, being correct, as well as the names of the tiers that you're traveling to. But any NPC name changes, any location uh, changes, um, wouldn't necessarily show up yet because these are all uh, handwritten steps. That being said, I do like that in the English version of this, it is um, something misplaced. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, something misplaced, something blue. In the German version, uh, I think it is something very sim uh, similar. In fact, let's take a look. Something misplaced, something blue. Awesome. And in the French version, it's um, Panic at the Blue Theater, <laughs> uh, which is maybe a callback to Panic at the Disco. I'm not sure. Oh, hey, Mandel in chat, or Lanavis. Hello, all. Mandel of the Combat Analysis plugin here. Awesome. Uh, I wanted to let you know, but I ran out of time before the stream, there's someone over on the Lotro Community Discord server who has some thoughts about combat analysis. I didn't know if you'd seen that, uh, but they had two specific requests that since I never use combat analysis, I don't know how easy or possible they are. Are you on that server? And if so, have you already seen it? Or are you not on that server? Do you need me to copy paste those messages? Just let me know. Actually, I can just snip those things. Snip, rectangular, great. I'm not a big fan of eye tracking software type things, but it would be nice if Windows would open up the window I'm requesting on the screen that I'm looking at. Like, that would be something where I'd be okay with it. Okay, um, a lot of bits. This was. I'll just pop it up here in the, in the corner. These were questions over on the Lotro community discord server. Um, option one, the request was to show full amount of damage done rather than the shorthand KMBT would be great. I don't know actually what KMBT means in this context. I assume the K is for combat. No. <laughs> um, and then the request to option to show damage done per session, what it is now, and damage done per character over the life of the character. I don't feel personally that a lifetime damage would be useful unless there was like a way to reset it so you could see over the course of a week or something. Because whatever you do at level 140 is just going to dwarf whatever you did at level 1. So I assume that there's a, uh, um, there's a happy medium in there between like your entire character, in which case a million damage that you just did today versus all the damage between level 1 and 50, right? Like. Um, uh, so I, I assume there'd be some sort of like reset of the lifetime so you could track more than just a single session. But I don't know. I, I don't know what makes sense because I don't, don't really use the combat analysis tool. Um, I, I've tried it once or twice, like I've fired it up, so I'm aware that it exists. But beyond that, no. Um, so those were the two questions. Let's see. 
<laughs> Emma says you can save all the spread sessions and make a spreadsheet. I imagine they were looking for something less spreadsheet oriented, though I can't imagine why. Yeah, I'll actually paste those into chat in case it is useful to you. Um, from the Electro Community Discord server. If you need a link to that, I can paste that into chat as well. I don't know if you want to join another Discord server. Cool. Where were we? Awesome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let me know if you have questions, comments, concerns, or if you're just hanging out and uh, sort of uh, co-writing plugins in the background. That's also awesome. Okay, so we were updating these three floral arrangements uh, text. So we can come on in and just do a quick little comparison, make sure we did what we wanted to. In the Blue Theater, place three floral arrangements on stage for arranging arrangements. Great. None of it says, hoping you'll do some debug demos. Excellent. Well, hopefully. It's Dynamite says, how is PBMP nowadays haven't played in eight years? So I cannot answer that very well because I am not a active PBMP player. But um, I can tell you that the development team over at SSG has been doing steady work on PBMP, trying to um, uh, revi uh, revitalize it in a way that... Um, probably makes more sense to people who actively play it. So it is being updated in some way that makes very little sense to me because I don't uh, uh, use use that system. Okay, and Blue Theater plus three four engines for Schmuck for to start. Perfect. And in Blue Theater plus three four engines on stage for the around. Okay, awesome. So we can go ahead and mark that one as done. Updated the floral arrangements text in case something misplaced is not used. And we should probably actually load that into the uh, <laughs> into the game to check on it before we actually commit it, but it's okay. So what we're looking for is, oh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, what we're looking for is if something misplaced, something blue is not in, in play. So these quests here, where it says go to the blue theater, pick up something misplaced, something blue from down, uh, do them. If we uncheck that, we can say, see, take Stable Master players to here, continue tasty morsels with five lost year citizens. And then in the blue theater, place three floral arrangements on stage for arranging arrangements arrangements and then we see take stable master high stables so that lets us uh, extract out the steps without making it too uh, confusing oh. hello oratorio in can as a secondary problem to the pvmp question it's dynamite is that i am playing on one of the legendary servers treebeard currently the only legendary server but ssg has said that they want to start up some new ones. I think they said in the fall, in the winter, later this year. Uh, and so I'm on the Treebeard legendary server and currently PBMP is not enabled for legendary servers. So um, even if I wanted to step into it right now, I would have to switch servers to a different server that I have characters on, which I do, several, uh, and get going on like an Evernight or a Laurelin or, uh, or something like that. Okay, so that was a thing that Little Red had requested on her stream. Awesome. Uh, add options button to unload the plugin. I think that's a really neat idea, but I just have to remember how to do it. And fortunately, I've already done it in a different plugin. So if we go into uh, Cube Plugins Deed Tracker, there is a unload thing somewhere. Let's see, D-Tracker Reloader. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. D-Tracker Reloader, when it comes in, keep plugins, Tracker Reloader, okay? D-Tracker Reloader, there it is. Okay, so the Reloader, when it, uh, so this is a way that you can get a plugin to reload itself, uh, is it loads a different plugin. When that plugin loads, 
it unloads your plugin and then loads your plugin. When your plugin loads, if that other one is loaded, you unload that plugin. And so that's how you have to go about uh, reloading a plugin because currently the Lotro API doesn't offer a way to say, please unload my apartment and then load a specific plugin. And so we have to kind of recreate that functionality ourselves. And to do that, we can see we want to go into Turbine Plugin Manager, unload script state. That's uh, their term for apartment. Uh, and we can just pass in the name of it. So that's actually going to be really easy. Let's go ahead and go back into Festival Buddy 2 here. And we're going to put that into our options window. And in here, our draw options window function uh, goes through a couple of different things. It also has a debug options. And you know what? I want to emphasize that all of this calculation here is a part of debug options. Calculate where everything should be. Not everything. All the debug sections should be. And then make room for the sections. And then draw the debug sections. Great. So here, we want to go ahead and probably just add another function, y equals draw unload button. Where are we drawing it, and where do we start that thing? OK. So function, draw unload button, uh, it's going to be pulling in those same things, the options, the control in which we are um, placing this, and the the starting Y element. Everything is uh, in this UI is very much like, here's the X and Y coordinates, here's the X and Y coordinates. Uh, there are, if all you have are simple checkboxes, buttons, labels, that kind of thing, you could do that with a list box or a tree view. But um, the debug options in here get um, excessive, and so we want to take that into account. Um, Maybe. I have to think about that. Maybe it would make a lot more sense just to do this as a list or a tree. I think it would complicate the drawing of it, but it would simplify the hierarchical structure of it. Okay, so draw the unload button. We need a button. Buttons are pretty easy to make, especially if you can just steal from somewhere else. Great, one of these, please. So it looks something like this, uh, except I'm going to rename it. So it's just going to be button. Great. I, I don't actually want to return it. So we're making a button. We're setting the parent two options. We're setting the position. We can just indent by, oh, I don't know, 10 is fine. And by the Y, we do want to make sure that Y equals Y plus whatever the height of this button is. Let's assume it's uh, like 30. And then we can return that Y so it can be used on the next. Uh, item. So we're going to be setting this text. This needs to be a call to uh, get string, and we're going to need it to be lang dot options dot something that doesn't exist yet. So we're going to come on in here, uh, unload a plugin, uh, and that's just going to be a table of entries. So the English one is going to be something, and then if we want, if we have the German and French strings, we could add them here. Uh, right now, the get string function falls back. So if you say, get me the French one, and that's not there, it falls back to the English one, better English than nothing. And since the developer, me, uh, speaks uh, primarily English, that seems like the right uh, default. So unload plugin. Fortunately, it's a pretty straightforward one. So we're coming in here, and that's the unload uh, plugin option. We're going to uh, set the text with that. Um, there was some specialization here that we don't need. And so the button click, just to make sure we've got this thing, we're going to do turbine.shell.writeline uh, and just say click. And that tells us that we've hooked this up correctly. And for that, we're going to go ahead and unload, reload, come back into the options. And OK, that button's not big enough. Also, a bit further down than we would have expected. 
that's not terrible. Uh, so we want to go ahead and set that width. Let's go ahead and set it to, I don't know, 100? Let's see how that is. Yeah, not quite big enough, 150. Okay, so we have an unload plugin. If we want, we can actually go ahead and indent that a little bit, kind of call it out as a special thing. Awesome, and if we click it, we can see that we got the click uh, written out to the standard chat channel. So that's good. So we're gonna go ahead and do something a little bit more serious with that, and we have the code that we want, right? Uh, instead of going turbine.shell, we're going turbine.pluginmanager.unload state, unload apartment. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and specify the name of this plugin, Festival Buddy 2. Now, this is uh, not the first time we're referencing the name of this plugin, and that has me a little concerned. I, I would like that there to be a more unified um, recognition of what is the name of this plugin. So, we can do that in main. Uh, we can do that somewhere else. We need it to be main, main win. We need it to be in options, and we need it to be... Well, that was it. Uh, so it could be in options. It could be in globals, probably. Let's see. Options. Options win comes well after globals. So let's go ahead and stick it into globals for right now. Globals. Plugin name equals. Cool. So what I would really like is that, that to be a function in the plugin manager. Uh, it might be. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look. So if we come on over here, we're going to go to the API documentation, and we're looking for turbine.lotro plugin manager. So what do we have? Get available plugins, get loaded, load plugin, refresh available plugins, show options. OK, none of that. Um, plugin. Get all her configuration, get name, get version. Oh, there might be a get name. Awesome. Let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, so, uh, turbine dot plugin dot uh, get name. And we'll go ahead and do turbine dot shell dot right line and say this equals. Uh, plugin name. Uh, that might actually be defined yet. We'll just hope. Okay, so at that point we can go ahead and unload, we can go ahead and reload. We already have some uh, some errors here. They look like syntax errors. Invalid member function call. Awesome. Um, that should probably be a dot notation. It should not. All right. Global's invalid member function call. All right, let's see where else we're using this, in it, if anywhere. Turbine.plugin. And let's go ahead uh, and look at a more robust document. Let's load other things online. A more robust plugin, which is the D tracker. Find it in there. Okay, we have turbine plugin on load, assigning that. Okay, we're not using that very much. Do we have any examples? About a specific plugin that has been loaded. Oh, I see. Maybe. Okay, we'll uh, not worry about that for right now. So we want that to be Festival Buddy 2. And any place where we were using Festival Buddy, uh, we want to go ahead and swap in a plugin name. So, uh, Festival Buddy Quick Slots. Let's see. 
Is it anniversary? And fireworks and brie. Okay. Failed to load background image. That'll do it. Okay, so drag bar 74. Awesome. This is part of the file refactoring that I did. I stuck a uh, drag bar into a library and then missed it. So image path, what do we have here? Image path, there we go. Missed a Galahad plugins, that's not gonna work. So we need that to be cube plugins. Uh, Festival Buddy 2, resources, drag bar. Let's give that a try. Okay, still not working, but we're getting closer. Uh, let's go ahead and document that. Drag bar for fireworks overlay not working. We'll come back to that. Okay, so festival buddy quick slots. Let's go ahead and go uh, make that string dot format uh, quick slots, and we'll throw in the uh, plugin name there. What don't you like about that? Oh, it's having issues with drag bar itself. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, what uh, other ones do we have? We have, we have plugin name itself, awesome. And we're gonna go ahead and use plugin name here. Same thing here, plugin name. Anytime you're using the same text or numbers over and over and over, it's a great time to say, hey, could that be a variable instead? Uh, this was a, a crashing bug I introduced earlier where we were trying to open up the options for the old plugin name instead of the current plugin name because I forgot to update it in a place. It was a little embarrassing. At least it wasn't on my stream, but still. And here we are in the unload script state where we want that to be plugin name. So even if we can't get it from the game itself, hey, what's the name of the plugin that I currently am, we can uh, go ahead and put that in a centralized location so we only have to change it in one place. Awesome. I'm going to close things up a little bit here. And unload, reload. If I close this thing, I think we're going to get a use command festival to reopen. Awesome. Now we also have this little uh, button here. It looks like a, a dwarf candle that we can also make use of. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a snapshot of our work so far. We don't want to lose that. Um, updated missing, updated old path for drag bar images. Now this is another place where we so rarely move where a plugin is, but this could be a variable somewhere. So again, we only have it in one place. What's the name of the of the of the outer folder? What's the name of the inner folder? Seems like a lot of effort to go through for something that happens once a decade, but it's a thought. Okay, uh, we have use variable for plugin name. Okay, there's that one, plugin name, plugin name, plugin name twice. There we go. And then we also have the added button to re uh, to unload plugin. I didn't actually test that. Let's go ahead and come on in here. Unload plugin. Doesn't do anything yet. Let's uh, take a look at that. Interesting. I wonder if you can't unload 
yourself. But <laughs> none of this does click. Um, let's uh, let's see what's up here. So we'll make sure the click is still happening. I think it should be. Okay, so the click is still happening. It looks like um, you may not be able to unload yourself. You might need to load something else that can unload you. Um, neat. Well, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, we've already seen what that would look like. We had a reloader. You can also have an unloader. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and consider whether we want to do that. I'm of mixed minds because on the one hand, I don't mind the idea of reloaders and unloaders if they make sense. Something like Titan Bar, something like Mini Raid, these are gigantic plugins that can really benefit from the occasional being able to unload and reload themselves. Especially Mini Raid, which is combating issues with keeping track of who's in your fellowship. But it adds an entry to this list. Uh, now, I like to prefix your loaders and unloaders with a tilde so that you. Uh, so that they sort to the bottom. So that if you are looking for them, it's cool, you can find them. But otherwise, they don't clog up the rest of it. Uh, I think I'll leave it. Um, or actually, oh no, um, we could do it differently because we just need to send that to chat. So if we come in, in to the D tracker and we come in into the um, completion window, uh, we can go ahead and see how do we do a shortcut? Because uh, what I really just want is when you click a button is we just want to send that to chat, you know, slash plugin space unload space festival buddy. Uh, so slash plugin space unload space festival uh, buddy. Yeah. That's what we would like to have happen. So let's go ahead and load up uh, D Tracker and get a sense of what that looked like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and complete Deeds of the Shire. Great, and now we have um, a window to play around with. So I, this is it right here. This is a button that when you click it, it is a shortcut to a chat function. So I want to see how we do that. All right, this is something that does something else. OK. Make shortcut from alias. All right, and that's going into a quick slot. Cool. It's unnecessarily complicated. So what we want is a quick slot. Okay, so we make a quick slot button. We make a turbinate UI dot button. I think I would actually do a Lotro button because I want it to look like a normal Lotro button. So uh, that's fine. And then we need a quick slot. And that quick slot okay so normally a quick slot you would see the thing that you are linking so you put something on top of it awesome and then where do we use this quick slot dot quick slot You say you call set, court, set shortcut on it with an alias. All right, let's play around with that because I don't know what I'm doing. So first thing, we want to make a quick slot. All right, I'm going to hoist this code out. Come on in and
it's going to look something like this. Now, of course, we're putting it in the wrong place. So we have a local quick slot button equals, or quick slot equals local quick slot. We're setting the parent to be this button. Awesome. Uh, and we need a make shortcut from alias. Well, we need to see how that works. Okay. So <laughs> we have a shortcut and we're gonna set the type to be an alias. Uh, we're gonna set the data to something. So we need uh, a, what's that gonna look like? Okay, so where is it gonna go? Channel, doesn't need to go anywhere. So at that point, alias is going to be just the text we wanna send, okay? So set data slash plugins, unload. Uh, and again, we're gonna go ahead and uh, include the name of the plugin as a variable. Unload S, and that's going to be plugin name. Oh no, it's the name of the apartment. All right, I'm just going to hard code it here. Okay, so we've replicated a lot of what we were looking at there. Let's go ahead and go back to where it starts. Okay, so we have the quick slot of that, that, that. There was also a hider to put an image on top of it, but let's see what this looks like first. So we're gonna go ahead and unload, come back into Festival Buddy and reload it. And here's what we can see. Um, well, it did work. That's pretty cool. Uh, but we can see uh, it uh, isn't the right shape for what we want. Not sure if we can do something about that. Quick slot is set size. Sure. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and do button get width and button uh, get height. Okay, we can see it's in there. That's awesome. Um, but the button, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, set the visibility of button to false for a minute. Okay, so the button does need to be visible for that alias to be visible. Interesting. Or shortcut, I should say. Nope, quick slot. Uh, I cannot keep it in my uh, straight in my head. Okay, so. If the quick slot is uh, not visible, can it still work? No, I mean, it's a pretty reasonable answer. is a reasonable way to hide that. So the way we did it in before was put something on top of it and to make it um, transparent to mouse clicking. Set mouse is to false. Let's uh, first see if we can even do that. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, now notice when you roll uh, when you're over it again, uh, the button does not do the rollover effect because it can't see that uh, that thing. 
buckle container equals turbine.ui.control. <sighs> what am I going to do? I want, I want to put something on top of that shortcut, and I want to put the button on top of that. So let's let's try something out here. Let's try uh, setting the container with the same uh, stuff that the button was going to have. So container set position, container set width. That's great. Um, and then we want the button to go on top of that. And when we do that, we want to make sure we are no longer setting the position. And Brad says, have to run. Thank you. Congrats on the new plugin when you launch. Thank you very much. One way or the other, it's going to be launching uh, soon. I'm just hoping I can get this done before I do that. OK, so uh, let's just go ahead and not worry about shortcuts and quick slots for a minute. Um, so we have a button. Its button is that container. Uh, its parent is that container. We have a width. We have a text. So it should by all, it, it's a more complicated button if we do it right. Uh, we didn't actually say container. Uh, set parent though, which is like the most important thing we can do. Options, otherwise it will not draw. Okay, we have an unload plugin. We can click it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and restore the click message because it makes me feel better when I, I click something and something happens. Awesome. Okay, so we want to go ahead and create this shortcut and have the container be the parent here. Uh, button's going to be, the width is going to be that. Okay, so we can do container get width. Uh, we can do container get height, um, but that's really set size because uh, we want it to be something. Okay, so we can see that this thing is here. Awesome. So if we go ahead and do the set mouse visible to false, does that solve our problem? Not currently, it doesn't. Button set parent container. Okay, yes. Maybe setting a click handler overrides the mouse visible. No. But set mouse visible is false. What's going on here? That's actually working less well than before. That's fascinating. Well, you know, it wasn't that bad. It gets kind of ugly to me, but it's not that noticeable. And as soon as you click it, like the thing is unloaded. I gotta, I gotta get better at shortcuts and aliases and whatnot because I don't have a good uh, in, internalized sense of how to finagle this. Because the shortcut, uh, it's acting a lot like if you bound it in one of these um, uh, quick slot areas, and it's just giving a little preview of what that would look like. And hmm, quick slot. It. 
We can set a back color. Turbine.ui.color.orange. What does that look like? Yes. Interesting. What if you set a background color of nil? It's no worse than it was. Set image. Set background. Okay. Can you set a background of nil, please? No. Why does the set mouse visible false work here? I wonder. Change the zero. Nope. Or whether I can, but it doesn't matter. Of course, because I don't know. Maybe not, of course. What, what are my options for set blend mode? Think that's going to do anything. That was correct. All right. I, I don't like how it looks, but I think it's good enough for for our purposes right now. So, um, one thing we wanna always double check is what happens if our debug options are true, do things still um, get uh, laid out okay? And the answer is yep, we have request testing, have nanigans. So, Lanabis, you were mentioning uh, debug demos. I highly recommend if you've got a plugin, uh, consider having a flag somewhere. Mine's just show debug equals true, and I can't change it on the fly here. I have to un unload and reload. Uh, but when it is set to true, among other things, we get a bunch of uh, debug options in the plugin. Uh, things for simu uh, simulating, picking, accepting, completing, failing uh, quests, seeing a, a quest objectives come across in chat, simulating a game of hobnanigans, because you don't want to run that out in real time. So for instance, uh, if you're doing a field two, you can start a flying feathers, uh, and then waiting for the game to start. So, oh, the game has started. Oh, flying feathers have scored. Oh, the steel beaks have scored. These kinds of things. So you can simulate. So it steps just beyond um, grabbing the message out of chat and then pumps it through the system or, or says, hey, you got a message from chat, handle this. And then from there on it goes. And so you can simulate these things without needing to even be on a Hobnetigans field and feel pretty comfortable that this is working as if you were having referees talk to you. No, no, fine feather scored. Cool. Lenovus says, and that is Turbine built in. So you can tell, um, yeah, that's it. There is a special, um, a variable during plugin startup and shutdown called plugin, uh, and you can tell it that it's the get options panel function equals 
whatever you want it to. And in this case, you just want it to be a function that returns a control. And this is what lets the game uh, host a control in the options um, dialog. Now, some plugins, especially ones with more complicated options, might just have a little button in here that says launch the actual options window. That's totally fine. Some of them will just have the same control here as in a window that they can open. So this, this gear window here could just open options and it could be the same control here, the literal same control, just in our own window instead of in the plugin manager window. So that's totally fine too. Uh, but ultimately, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the three or four different ways of doing options. Don't have any or have some and you just tell Lotro, hey, here's the control that holds my options. Please show that when, when requested. Or, hey, it's just a button that launches another window. Um, or it's the same thing as in that other window, so it doesn't matter how you get to go to it. And so you're looking for plugin.getOptionsPanel equals a function that returns a control. And in this case, I just have a turbine.yo.control. You can see I don't have to populate it yet. It's just here is the object. Here's one well, table under the covers. But here's the object that you're going to display when it's time for that. And then the rest of it is just putting stuff into this options control, just like you lay out with any UI. Uh, and that will get loaded up into uh, this options panel. Now, some uh, plugins don't have options. Let's see, does my cosmetics? Nope, if, there's, if you do not uh, override uh, plugin.getOptionsPanel, then you will get this default. There are no options available for this plugin when someone goes to that options tab. But if you do override that, then whatever you put there is uh, get put in. And you know, sometimes it's very nice to just to kind of confirm that what you've done is what you meant to do. Uh, so, you know, sometimes just make make a thing and set its background color, right? Cool. <laughs> That's definitely the thing that I passed it. Uh, the thing that I passed it is also super large. What's going on with that? Option set size. Oh, maybe it's not that large. I don't know. That seems weird to me that uh, that orange color just keeps going. But it's okay. It's very eye catching. Lambda says So all debugging is written into the plugin by the author. Um, I think that's a fair thing to say. There's a couple things that you have access to in Turbine, uh, the, the Turbine namespace. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. The first one that is really important is the turbine.shell.writeline, which sends whatever text you ask it to go to the standard output. Uh, and so that's where we're seeing loaded Festival Buddy 2 version 2.0.1 by cube. Uh, this is coming from a turbine.shell.writeline uh, statement. And you can add color tags if you want to change the color. We can see plugin script state Festival Buddy has been unloaded. You know, there, there's a color tag in there somewhere. But the upshot is it will always go to the standard chat channel and it will contain basically whatever you ask it to contain. The other thing that's really important is the engine um, git stack trace or git call stack, sorry. Um, whenever you call this in a function, you will just get a standard call stack of how did we get here? Oh, this function called this function on, on this line, on this line it called this function, on this line it called this function, and now we're here. Uh, and that can be incredibly useful if you're like, what is calling this function? I do not understand. And that can happen with more complicated plugins, especially when you're looking at settings changes, like how is this state getting mutated? I, it's messing everything up. Cool, just throw a, a you know, throw the uh, return value of this into one of those turbine.shell.write lines. Um, a lot of people will wrap that up in a, a debug or, or info calls that uh, have colors for for those purposes, but under the covers it's just turbine .shell .write line. You know, toss git call stacks result into that, and then you'll be like, oh, okay. I, at least I know how I got here, right? Uh, sometimes y the thing is getting called two different ways, and you're, okay, that one's right, that one's wrong. Okay, that's the one I have to fix. So this is a function you don't have to write yourself. Uh, whenever you want to figure out how you got to a place, git call stack. Apparently, you can also get, get script version. 
Not sure what that looks like. Script log. Logs messages to the script log. Huh, haven't tried that. Yeah, a lot of bits. You have to output that. So this is going to return a string. Uh, and so you would you would look at that. What are the arguments? Fascinating. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that, actually. So when we are in uh, draw options win, we can go ahead and just say turbine.shell.writeline. How we got here. And concatenate in the results of turbine.engine get call stack. Super easy. Unload. Reload. And in our standard output, we can see how we got here. Stack traceback. So everything starting from here is the string that was returned from that function. So stack traceback. In function get call stack. Obviously, that's what, that's where we are. Uh, called by um, that's the options window, which was called by main, which was called by main. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. And we can follow that up, right? We we can we can make sense of this. So let me move that back down here. So let's look at main. Main uh, 240, awesome. That's draw windows. Uh, 218, uh, we're in draw windows and we're calling draw options win. Okay. And then 659, we're in draw options win and we asked for a uh, get call stack. So kind of trivially, when you call get call stack to get your call stack, get call stack is always going to be the first thing because that's where you are. But then the, the real meat of it is going to and uh, be a part of it. And this is very useful because you can see a pretty comprehensive path here, but the name of the file and the file line number, which is critical because some of these files get quite long. The, the poor man's version of this is to scatter about your code, just like draw options win. <laughs> like, uh, so you can see where you jump into it. It's fine. Like I'll do that sometimes when I'm doing very specific things. It's like I, I I need to understand the flow of the logic here, but only in a specific ways. But for detailed information, uh, uh, Turbine Engine Call Stack is your friend. Okay. Um, and yeah, any any other debug stuff because every every plugin is going to be a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be probably less useful for the game to give debug capability to you than you just do it yourself. So in my case, when I want to accept uh, or test accepting a quest in, what is the name of this quest here? Festival in celebration of midsummer. Cool, in celebration of midsummer. So if I want to test this, I go ahead and hit accept and Festival Buddy acts as if it saw the acceptance of that in chat because this button here puts it together as if it was in chat and tosses it to the chat parser and says, hey, do something with this. Uh, so we can test end to end. So let's take a look at that. Um, so accept. Okay, so w we are looking for a new quest. So based on whether we're logged in English, French, German, uh, it's going to be new quest or novella, whatever, new afhaba, and we're going to concatenate that on with the name of the quest because that's what it looks like when you accept one of these things. Uh, uh, completion is a little bit more complicated because there's a new line after the uh, completion uh, term, which you know completed or, or abgeschlossen, what what not. Then you have your new line, and then you have the name of the thing that was completed, and then you have another new line. Why not? And so um, constructing this together, and then you can go ahead and call the thing. Although I'm calling filter quest, I should really, by all rights, oops, um, I should be calling um, something better. Oh, I guess I had to. <sighs> okay. so. Because this uh, chat log dot received is um, an anonymous function here, um, it we can't invoke it directly. But ideally, this would just be a function to like some like function handle chat, right? Um, handle chat sender args, and we would just say received equals handle chat, and we're and we're done, right? Uh, and in that case, the body of this 
would go ahead and be inside handle chat. And then we could call handle chat directly and say, you, you've got mail, right? Like do something with this. And then we'd be confident uh, that it's end to end, but we would have to go ahead and pass in that uh, in an args.message and also args.chat type in order for it to uh, go to the right location. So it's a, it's a case where anonymous functions are not our friend. It's very convenient to be able to just uh, write this function in line like this, but it makes it harder to do end to end uh, testing. Eh, trade offs. Okay, so uh, yeah. If you're doing chat parsing, have a way to generate those messages that doesn't require you to go out and pick up a quest, right? If you're doing um, uh, chat parsing for NPCs, have a way to fake out that NPC saying something. Hey, the seal beaks have scored, right? You do not want to have to go start a game of Hobnanigans to test what happens when the steel beaks have scored. It's fine the first time, it gets a little old the 17th time. Same thing with fireworks and brie. You don't want to have to wait for the announcer to say, now is the time for anything but red. You, you want to be able to test that. Um, so what your debug uh, layout will look like, it's going to be kind of um, specific to what you're looking for. And sometimes there's just no way to debug something. If you are looking for an effect um, that is on your character, it's hard to fake that out because that's a thing that you say, hey game, please give me effects. And it gives you effects. And then you're like, cool, I have, I have an effect. Um, like you can build up a fake effect, but it's, it's not quite the same. Uh, it's not gonna have some of the things that a real effect might have uh, without lots of effort. So how much effort there is uh, for the debugging, that, that's a personal choice as well. Okay, so I think we're gonna call this good enough for what we're doing here. So we're gonna set that back to false. Now I don't like that the unload button just leaves this here. Not a fan of that. Have to think about that. <sighs> How much do I even care about thing? I, I think I don't care about it enough. I'm gonna stash that away. So if you're using a modern source control tool, you'll have a stash option where you can say, eh, don't don't uh, don't do that right right yet. In the meantime, uh, moving that up is good. Adding the fun uh, adding those is good. Okay, so we're gonna move that up and add those comments. Add those comments. But the uh, draw unload button, I'm not a fan of. So um, added some comments to options debug stuff. Okay. So the rest of this, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and stash this one file. And this is going to be the uh, festival buddy uh, unload button ex uh, experiment. Cool, so we're gonna save it. We're not deleting it, but it's no longer here. RageFit says, would a text to speech add-on for quests and stuff be possible in Locho, or is the API not open enough? So the, challenge with doing something text-to-speech is that APIs don't currently have a way to make noise. Uh, there's uh, Prime plugin has done an admirable job of trying to circumvent this for rating experiences where it can make noise to do alerts and stuff, but uh, there's a, so there's a couple ways around this. I don't know how Prime Plugins does this, but if you do uh, chat logging where you are capturing chat to a file, that file is written to pretty much uh, right away. As soon as something comes in, it goes to that file. So if you are monitoring changes to that file, you could react to that with a desktop application that could play sound. Uh, so you could write a program that looks for something in that file and reacts to it. But uh, another challenge is that by default, um, a plugin cannot uh, see all of the text in, say, a quest dialog. Now, there's ways to get at that data, um, again, not within the game, but outside the game. So you could try to package that together into some sort of plugin that says, okay, I know what text that is. But again, you can't play text-to-speech within a plugin. So a better bet would be a desktop application uh, sees, oh, you picked up in celebration of bin summer. And then it can do that, whether you join in the revelry here in Minas Tirith or in far off lands, etc. cetera. So um, that, that desktop application that can monitor uh, for triggers um, 
maybe your standard chat channel, maybe your plugin is, is, is popping stuff in there as it sees things. So whenever you pick up a quest, complete a quest, um, uh, advance a quest objective, those things could go into uh, into a special log. But at that point, you could just uh, log the, the quest tab, right, and get a pretty good approximation of what's going on there. And then a desktop application could monitor that quest log and take appropriate actions. It knows when you picked up a quest, it knows when you dropped a quest off. So between those two times, it can keep an eye out for quest progression dialogues. You just grabbed a brush for the horses or whatever. Um, so while, you, while that's not a problem that's solvable from within a plugin in game, uh, it's not entirely impossible either. Where it's gonna fall a little flat is sometimes, and we saw this on Little Redhead stream, sometimes there is no quest progression text when you do a thing. If I go over to the florist's daughter and use the, um, the blanket to make a floral crown, there's no in-game recognition that I have done that thing. Uh, so there's no way to uh, easily tell an external program that, hey, that, that thing happened. So you're kind of dependent on where the game has quest progression text that you could react to it, but you could totally react to it. Um, so the trick would be gathering the data for quests so that you, when a quest is picked up, you know what to, what to do. Um, but quest advancement dialogues where you go talk to an NPC uh, and advance the quest, again, that's a point, place where uh, plugins don't, know that, uh, don't have the ability to know that you've done that. And so uh, it would be more of a challenge. But again, you can have a plugin that knows, based off of external data, oh, this thing will have these three advancements. So click here when you've done the first advancement. OK, cool. We'll, we'll send out a special command. Um, an external desktop application will look for that command. It'll, it'll do the correct text-to-speech. So I feel like it is a problem that is solvable to a degree that it would be very interesting to see the result. But it's not, not my particular wheelhouse. Um, so I don't want to say it's impossible. It might be a little clunky based on where the API is right now, and it would definitely have to be paired with a plugin in-game and a, a desktop application outside of the game that uh, does something like keep an eye on that, uh, that um, chat uh, logging. Now, I don't know how uh, Prime does their um, audio alerts. I was seeing a discussion on the Prime server that suggested it doesn't work well on a Mac unless you're using, I think it was Bootstrap. So they might be doing some sort of memory looking as opposed to um, following a file. But end result uh, would be the same. You would know that you need to do a thing, and then you do the thing. So. Sorry that there's not a, uh, a direct solution within the Lotro API for doing that with a plugin, but it'd be really interesting to see what someone came up with. Um, of course, the other side of things is um, if you're doing text-to-speech, then presumably you're using some sort of web service to do that, um, which, in which case my understanding is a lot of those have some sort of uh, free limit within which you can do, and then after that you start paying. So who's paying for that? Um, and how do, you, how do you manage that? Yeah, that's another question that I'm not qualified to answer. OK. So what do we have here? Um, we were looking at, oh, chat logger. There's an empty line here that snuck in. Get rid of it. Uh, so we just want to fix that drag bar and then do this release. Awesome. So let's take a look at drag bar. I almost certainly broke it when I moved it into the libraries folder. I thought I was fixing that. That's drop down, that's not drag bar. I thought I fixed that at the end here where I went ahead and made sure drag bar appears in the correct namespace. Um, because otherwise it would appear in the global.qplugins.festivalbuddy.libraries. Uh, uh, drag bar, and it's kind of a pain to spell that out. Um, so let's see where else this is being used, first of all. Fireworks, yes, awesome. Let's um, let's take a look and see where this might be, using, be used in Deed Tracker. Really? Not at all? Hmm. 
fair enough. Um, all right, well, when in doubt, let's go over to the Lotro interface website and check it out. So Dragbar is packaged up as its own uh, standalone uh, uh, plugin with examples, it says. So you're looking for ads tracking and UI hiding functionality. It's used by attaching it to any parent window. If self is your parent window, you can attach it as follows. Something dot drag bar equals. Okay, so let's take a look at that. We have the, uh, the import statement. This is the drag bar itself. Something dot drag bar equals. Okay, well. Let's go ahead and get rid of all that referencing. Self. All right, let's take a look at that. So this is a anniversary and it's fireworks. And just to drag this one thing around. Oh, hey, it, it does work, fantastic. And we can see here that Festival Buddy 2 that we were doing earlier. So this is something to watch out for. I really like um, organizing my files more than just dumping a whole bunch of them in one folder. Be once it gets more than, I don't know, 10 files, it starts getting really uh, a little bit more difficult to find things. And you keep stumbling across, you know, drop down or drag bar, which are just libraries. Like you, you're just meant to, to pull them in and use them without modifying them very much. And so, having a, a directory for libraries, having a directory for the turbine files for class and type, so you can package them in, but not have them cluttering up your, your main directory, which is hopefully things that are really important for your plugin to work. And so you can do this, but whenever you're referencing them, you'll then have to um, uh, reference them by the namespace that they're in, I think. Th these might not be the right terms for Lua, but it's, it's what's in my head. So if you, um, have it here in uh, quick guide slash midsummer, then you're looking at uh, GQ, uh, Q plugins, festival buddy to uh, quick guides, midsummer, midsummer chain lookup. And it's a, you know, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot to do. So you would, uh, let's see, can I do that real fast? Let's come into main. So you would have um, quick guides.midsummer dot midsummer dot something. I don't know, I have to I have to sort that out. But instead, if you go ahead and say, hey, let's put into the normal Festival Buddy 2 namespace the thing that we just declared that is also in our namespace, just copy that over, copy that reference over, then the lookup just works. And more importantly, the Lua um, extension for Visual Studio Code seems to make sense of it as well. This is a, a place where I'm falling down in the deed tracker plugin. So I wanna take this uh, hoisting uh, capability back there and, uh, and make use of it more. Okay, but it seems like that's good. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and say no for that and the drag bar for fireworks overlay not working. We're gonna say it does work. So fixed drag bar reference. And that is before it was doing a explicit reference, keep plugins, festival buddy to drag bar. And now just saying drag bar, awesome. Okay, so it would not hurt to exercise this thing a little bit before uh, uh, sending it out. So we're gonna do a quick run through Midsummer here. And using the quick guide, uh, it should be pretty fast. So I probably have reset it or it's not alive. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the reset button anyway. And then checking out my quest log, oops. Midsummer, I can see I've already gone ahead and uh, done the initial quests, picking up in celebration of Midsummer all the way on down to 
uh, four crowns. Do I have? Nope. I want my fateful toolkit. Fateful toolkit was available from the Fate of Gundabad expansion. It increases your landscape tokens. You can already get a lot of tokens uh, from Midsummer, but why not a little bit more? The upshot is instead of getting basically three per quest, I'm getting four per quest. Okay, so one of the goals of the Quick Guide is that it does raise up the relevant map uh, whenever possible. So we can see a little map of where the horses are in here. Uh, and that was very helpful for me because it just, the asymmetry of it kept getting to me, where there's uh, two horses on this uh, this row and there's three in the other row. And it's fine, like there's six total and there's one in the middle, it's gotta be a little asymmetrical. But knowing, remembering which side is asymmetrical and which one's not, is not something I wanted to spend the brain power on and now I don't have to. Now uh, Festival Buddy will do it for me. Sometimes the quick guide's more granular than others. Here it's tracking, you know, the uh, the grooming and the feeding separately. It doesn't need to do that. It could just track when you uh, turn it in. Uh, I was trying to get a sense of how granular I wanted these steps to be. And there's no harm in having more steps, but uh, I wasn't quite sure, like, you know, tracking every single one. Like, do I track when you pick, uh, have picked up 10 flowers for the florist's daughter? That seems silly, but I could, right? <laughs> I could have tracked every single flower. Pick up one flower, pick up two flowers, pick up three flowers. So at a certain point, it's it's definitely, there's there's no one rule about it. It's just, you gotta sort out what's, what's, what's right for your desires for the plugin. As an expression I uh, think of often, perfect is the enemy of good, or various variations on that. And you know, the search of perfection is it's going to interfere with your your uh, your release dates. And that's definitely true for this plugin. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this guide up a little bit. Since I am doing things in order, I don't need to uh, to see more than uh, the first couple. I'm going to put something misplaced, something blue back on there though. This map I find very helpful as a, just a gentle reminder of which flowers are far enough apart that I can steal a second or two back of time by mounting up uh, for the motion between them or using some sort of um, speed accelerator. Like a Bjorning, I, I wouldn't bother mounting up. I would just go into, um, 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 it's not hibernate. Uh, the thing that lets them run faster across the field. Um, I must face it. It's green, I just know that. It's shift one on my computer. It's not Ram Rambler or something, it's uh... Oh, that's gonna bug me. What is the name of that Bjorning ability? Well, you know what? When in doubt, we go to the Litro Wiki. Wanderlust. That's it. Wanderlust. It's a great ability, plus 60% uh, peaceful movement speed. Uh, it's basically like riding a um, not quite as fast mount as you get with Journeyman, but still pretty fast. Yeah, when I'm running around with my Bjorning, basically anytime I'm not in combat, I'm, I'm in Wanderlust uh, when I'm doing qu uh, quests. Uh, and because it's an instantaneous transformation instead of the induction for a mount, it's uh, fantastic, except that the game is very insistent that you can't do some things like making floral uh, arrangements with your bare paws, which I feel like is a little silly. Hmm. 
Okay, heading on up to the soldiers tier. I may not go ahead and do everything here because a full run through this guide does take around 30 minutes, depending on whether or not you've got uh, five minute cooldowns and milestones, for instance, and how fast you are zipping back and forth. But I did want to get a chance of picking up some quests and dropping off some quests, and we've seen that working, uh, which is excellent. As Little Red had mentioned on her stream, uh, the auto detection for these elements works in French and German as well, but the text is largely untranslated. The tiers that you're going to uh, and the names of the quests are translated, but the rest of it's in English. So, you know, take the quest, German text, and go to tier, German text. So I think I'll finish up here at the Splintered Shield and then go ahead and start doing the release process, which is going to be a little bit more involved than normal because this is going to be a uh, brand new release of Festival Buddy 2 instead of just a, an update to a patch or an update to an existing plugin. So we're going to see how we're going to go about that. Okay, so we do not want to go up and down the stairs repeatedly. Uh, so we'd rather uh, bounce off of this uh, stack of kegs here and go talk to the uh, noisy minstrel by the fire. By the time we're done there, our uh, damage light should have worn off. And that way we only uh, pass the minstrels on the stairs once on the way back up instead of running past them. And then the next time you run up, uh, it feels like a waste. <laughs> was it says speed run strats well it certainly I feel like it makes me faster I don't, I don't know if it actually uh, makes things faster okay as a little bit had mentioned uh, using your uh, key binding to remove floaty names can be very helpful in just identifying where one class is uh, compared to the other ones uh, but I, I tend to just see constellations, you know, it's kind of a half big dipper over here. It's kind of a V over here. So after a few dozen iterations of this, especially using this uh, reference um, image uh, that Edgar Arthur put on the wiki, uh, I, I've gotten pretty good about always getting it on the first try. But it's harder if you don't have that, uh, that reference. And the number of times I've run away without picking up this barrel of wine is just depressing. For most of the uh, the maps or uh, helper images here uh, in the Festival Buddy for Midsummer, I went ahead and put those together myself because I knew what I was looking for. Uh, but for the to the last drop, it was they're so sparkly that I was kind of despairing of how I was going to get a clean shot of that. I imagine that there was some changing of settings to drop down effects or whatnot that, uh, that Edgar Arthur did. But when I found that on the wiki, it was just like, oh, that's, that's fantastic. It's exactly what I would have done, but uh, already done. So thanks very much, Edgar Arthur. I went ahead and put a, a, a thank you note in the, uh, the readme file um, for that, because I didn't know where else I should put it. OK, so we can see that we've finished up here in the Splintered Shield. Awesome. So I think we're good to pause there and start looking at releasing. So I tend to do uh, two things when I'm releasing uh, like this. First, uh, if this is a new version of old plugin, I definitely want to look at how the old plugin talked about itself. Um, and if it's incorporating patches, I want to look and see what, what did I say about my patches? What images did I think were important to include? And then finally, I might go back to uh, another plugin of mine. In this case, I'll go back to D Tracker. Shoo, fly. Um, and this is a much more thorough introduction to a plugin. So it's, it's useful to have that as a reference point. So as we've talked about here before, uh, when you are uploading a plugin or updating a plugin on Lutra Interface, there's going to be some boxes to fill out. Uh, for information, especially the information that goes in the description. And this is incredibly useful to not have to type up on the fly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-create the text that goes here, 
probably the text that goes over on the forums as well to introduce this. And we want to go ahead and get these screenshots now instead of while the forum is waiting for us to fill it out. So uh, the image that uh, was originally put out there by Galahad uh, kind of summarizes what things are available. And I think we can split those out. And so nowadays we can put up to four images attached to here. And so I think the barter window, that's probably a good idea. Let's go ahead and make some notes. Screenshots, barter window. Okay, I like it. Uh, the main festival buddy window, the main festival buddy two window. Um, there's an alts window here. I think that's interesting. I don't have a good way to, um, do I not? I might be able to fake that out. Alts window, that feels useful for people who have alts. And that was the, let's see, harvest math. Okay. And, I don't know if I, the, I feel like the dance window and the emotes window are maybe things I don't understand enough to really lean into, but I'm gonna say the quick guide, a quick guide window. So those are the four screenshots I wanna get with meaningful content. Okay, let's get started on that. So the barter, uh, and it doesn't have to be in any specific order. So, barter. So here's an example for midsummer. Um, there's also other ones like for spring, but um, I am have, have introduced the idea of um, headers, sections uh, within the barter window instead of just everything being in one. And so in Midsummer, we can see this is what would be under the wedding garb section, the cosmetic pets. These are just the in-game uh, or, uh, order for these things. So I think I'll go ahead and pick something like cosmetic pets. And we'll just go ahead and use the snipping tool uh, in rectangular mode to grab that screenshot. Not sure I like it being on top of my head. Okay, we're gonna give me a screenshot. And we're gonna resist the urge to crop in our screenshot grabbing. We can crop it later. Okay. So we're gonna come on in and I'm just gonna do this in MS Paint. I have no transparencies to worry about. It's super easy. And just bring it up, bring it over. There are better tools for this, but this one is pretty easy. And we're just cropping all the way around. Okay, so we're gonna save this somewhere and I like this to be in source control as well as one of the, the artifacts of release. So we're gonna go ahead to documents, Lord of the Rings Online. This is going into plugins. This is going into cube plugins, Festival Buddy 2. Uh, and I have a directory here called website. Now. What's uh, what's gonna go in there? Well, plugins, key plugins, D tracker website. Uh, we can see there's a directory for images. Uh, I should probably have a directory for form description and literalinterface.com description, uh, and then there's one for like an archive for older versions. So let's get, get started with images. Um, Lutro forum descriptions and. Lotro, well, lotrointerface.com descriptions. Now, why do I save these off? Well, first of all, as a sort of a historical curiosity, I think it's neat to be able to kind of go back and look at how these things have evolved over time. Uh, but also just as a data integrity uh, thing, if Lotro interface goes down one day or if the Lotro forums, you know, were ever archived or made uh, inaccessible or something, I still have access to these. And I can see how it changes over time, regardless of if something else has a data loss or data failure. Now, probably not important. I probably wouldn't need to do that. You could probably just let source control take care of it and just have your Lotroform description file. You can just see how it's changed over time and, and have it tagged. That'd be fine too. Uh, I may need to switch to that at some point anyway, but having them be accessible without having to move my source control back and forth through time, 
it feels moderately worthwhile. Also, these files are not very big. Okay, so we need a Lotro Forms description. And we're going to go ahead and name that version 2.0.1. We're going to come in into the literature interface .com. Awesome. But the thing that we're actually here are the images. So we're saving this image. This is uh, PNG format is fine for this. Uh, if you're worried about size, JPEG is also fine. Oh, what did I, how did I call these over images? Okay, I definitely included the version and the plugin name. So this is Festival Buddy 2, uh, and this is the barter window and the version of it, version 2.0.1.png. And we're gonna just take a look and see how big was that. All right, so website and images. It's 159 kilobytes, it's not really a problem. Kind of curious about what it is with JPEG, and it is eh, about half the size. Given how uh, specific the uh, image is, how much text there is here, I'm happy to keep it in ping format. Okay, and that's it. So we have uh, one of the four that we want to do. The rest of this is going to go way faster. So we have the barter window. The main uh, Festival Buddy window. Let's go ahead and get one that I think will be very uh, noticeable, and that's to the last drop. We're going to go ahead and get a uh, screenshot of this. When you're doing screenshots, uh, be careful not to use the print screen button in game. Yes, it does make screenshots, but it also doesn't do a pretty high quality compression for the JPEG. Uh, and so your screenshots will be much nicer if you use an external uh, grabbing tool, like, like the snipping tool here. It's built in for pretty much every Windows machine that exists right now, I expect. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this off. This is going to be the main window. And again, I'm just going to take it one, about one pixel to the oops edge. Cool. So that's the um, how that looks here. That's the main window. We're good uh, for that. Okay, alts window. Um, so for that, no, alt data display. Load it from each of your alts. Great. Um, well, when in doubt, fake it. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, what it's looking for in, in the directory. So we're going to come into documents, loadings online, plugin data and coming into the server. And we're looking for all characters because it has to be in here for Festival Buddy to be able to access it. So we can see there's an Affidil section. Great. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Doesn't really matter what it is. And we can make sure um, kill locked. Great. So we can load this back in. And now our alts window has information. Now we wanted to come into harvest math and let's go ahead and unload so we can take a look at cooldowns. What's the order of these things? Harvest math is number three. Awesome. So we're looking for number three here, cooldowns. Let's go ahead and make some cooldowns. So that's going to be um, Let's assume these are in seconds. So 120, 240. Let's try that. Huh. 
Huh. Wasn't what I was expecting. I just killed locked, yeah? Let's try to trigger it with Affidil here. So we're going to come on into our debug options here. And we're going to go ahead and turn our debug options on. That would be helpful. So we're going to come on into the options window. And should debug options is true now. OK, so if I were going to go ahead and accept treasure hunting lockbox, accept and complete. OK, it's doing it by some other way. A little investigation is all. So many windows. Ugh. OK, so scroll searching. OK, so where do we use this? Well, it's in debuffs. Where does debuffs get used? This function is currently not used. Well, that's hilarious. That is true. Then why does it exist? for debuff. Okay. Effects. So we're looking at effects. Yeah. So we're looking for effect end, which is start time plus duration. That should be a number of seconds. Okay. Cooldown, get string. I'm actually a little surprised that what I did didn't work. Also, notice that they're storing these in the file based off of the name of the, the display name of it instead of that key that we were using, that, that language independent key. That's not right, but it's not a thing that we can solve today. So, um, later. So, festival buddy two fixes for later. Save files use quest names instead of quest keys. Or in this case, effect names. Okay, we're going to try something there. these things work? Hmm. Okay, well, confusing though it is, um, it looks like it is supposed to have a hourglass or a checkbox. They currently all have checkboxes. It does make me wonder, presumably it works, uh, we just don't have um, an easy way to test it right now. But what we should be able to do is fake it out. And so what we're looking for, um, we can see in our resources, we probably have an hourglass symbol somewhere. Let's just go through these, take a look. Oh, where on earth are those? 
Oh, of course, it may be referencing an internal thing. Um, hourglass, there we go. If the game already has it, you don't, uh, and you can find the, uh, the image ID for it, you don't need to uh, bring in your own image. Oh, window. So if current time is less than V, awesome. Um, so local rand equals um, random. No. How do you do this in Lua? Well, I can't remember, but I don't need to. Lua random number. Math.random, of course. Math.random, which we do have access to, uh, returns a float in the range of 0 to 1. Great. So what we really want is if rand is less than 0 0.5, then. And so what it'll do for us is each time we load this, It'll just give us a different arrangement of those. Wow. Um, three, yeah, that's four. That's, four. that's, that's good. Um, what we would also like, though, is some of those um, tokens. So if Schildbacht for three tokens, we're going to want some of those. Now, what does Harvest Math have for tokens? Well, quite a lot, and a lot of them are fish. So let's uh, come on over to strings, tokens, uh, and harvest math. We can see um, there are some race uh, tokens. I'm not too worried about those, but the festival tokens, so that's two. Let's say we have 73 of those. It's just a nice round number. Um, you know, why not have some mithril coins as well? Uh, we'll have uh, 12 of those. And then apples. So let's go ahead and so one, two, three. Four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. So we have two, four, and one. And that uh, will probably be enough for now. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I didn't unload the plugin before I was made my changes, and they were, of course, overwritten. Actually, as a quick little test, what we can do is just Let's say the number of the token that you are is the number that you have using a multi select. Whoops. And just load that in. Okay, so this is what it would look like if, uh, if you all had a bunch of things. We don't want all of that. Are race tokens still used? Are those something that is in the game? I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, zero, uh, six, and really anything over the first six, I'm uh, I'm good not worrying about. Okay, so thirteen mithril coins, seventy-two. Uh, this thing is still loaded. That's okay. Um, four, five, and six. Okay, so we're going to copy that block, unload, come back in, and paste it in. Okay, so that gives us a more reasonable seven small apples, two medium apples, and one large apple. It would be nice to have a little overlay that kind of specifies the difference there, uh, but that's a later problem. And we can see the tokens that Schildwacht has. It's great. Uh, good job, Schildwacht. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, now that we've faked this out, use the snipping tool to grab what we want of this. So again, we're going to um, save off a new place to work with first. This is Alt's window. And we're just going to shrink that down and paste. All right, again, poor man's cropping. Just 
went a little bit further than I meant to. Great. Now the good news is, for most plugins, most of these windows don't change most of the time. And so once you've got uh, some of these, and this is true for, for instance, D-Tracker, um, the UI hasn't changed enough in, I don't know, a year or two for me to bother even making new screenshots. They're close enough, right? If little things are different, it's fine. Okay, so now that we understand a little bit better how these alts windows work, we have an alts window. And then finally the quick guide window. And so we need to switch back to Midsummer for that. And get our screenshot. Quick guide window. Great. And one last time. Okay, so we have all four of the images that we wanted to prep. And again, getting that out of the way before you're in the mindset of pushing this out right now means that when it's time to do it, you can just upload them and you're good. Uh, it also means you don't forget to actually save them off. We're gonna get rid of that JPEG I accidentally saved. Make sure this looks okay. Yeah, okay. Since it was still in the um, MS Paint uh, window, I was able to save it as the PNG it was mo meant to be. Japeo says, I don't think race tokens exist anymore. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. But uh, it's, it's a neat little bit of archaeology because uh, this plugin was released a while ago, right? Like this uh, dates back to 2014, I think. Okay, festival, festival, yeah. So um, last updated 2014 and first released in 2012. Like it's over a decade old. And so coming into these screenshots and being like, oh, there's a token that you can't do anymore. Uh, and maybe, maybe a... Uh, in the background, it's like, oh, the, you know, these things have been around for a while. Um, the five applications of Coveritol is interesting because I don't think that's what that icon looks like anymore. Hmm. Well, now I'm actually curious about the harvest map, troves, and trickery brie. Okay, so we do have this little window here. Perform remotes on selected targets. Hmm. I feel like that could be even more explanatory. Not today. Okay, cool. So we have our images done. Now we need descriptions. Now, unfortunately, uh, you can't get the markup of, of the page very easily if you didn't put it there in the first place. So for this extended support, I can come in and edit this and get all of the, the markup, no problem. For an existing one, if I wanted to do something like that, well, I can't, so I'll have to just make it up as I go. So the old change log, we're gonna go ahead and abandon that. It doesn't matter anymore, it'll be here for historical record. We still have the file in our source control, but it's been moved to a subdirectory. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and lift a lot of this description and come on in and start editing stuff. All right, so the screenshots are done. Text for lotrointerface.com and forums. I might do the forums later uh, off a stream, just get this up on Lotro Interface as fast as possible. Uh, so we're coming on into the uh, website and lotrointerface.com descriptions, and here we go. So the basic stuff is here. We're gonna view with word wrap on for this. It's a simple tool to help you keep track of festiv festivities throughout Middle Earth. It will display the number of tokens in your wallet when some effect have expired. For instance, treasure chest in the Haunted Pearl, and a simple quest guide for those quests that are easily forgotten. There's also a dance instructor to help you with the dance quest, and a bar list showing the cost of all the items at the festival so you can refer to it on the go. Yeah. To install, copy the, all right, cube, 
uh, plugins folder to your plugins directory. For instance, blah blah blah, documents, all the rings online, plugins, cube plugins. I'm going to incorporate some text from the deep tracker um, plugin about using uh, the Votra plugin compendium as well. Festival Buddy is available at present in English and partially in French and German. String files are easily editable with support for German and Russian languages also. Yeah, this plugin adds the following commands when loaded slash festival shows slash hide the window. It also provides a mini icon. Oh, does that thing respond to... That's a problem. Make sure uh, icon hides and HUD is hidden. Mini icon to... I don't know how to, to write that. Oh, words are hard. Just ignore it for right now. Current festival is supported. I'm going to grab that out of the um, this list here. All right, spring. It includes the dates that were added. I think that doesn't matter anymore. Anniversary, midsummer, summer slash farmers fair, harvest math, Yule. And hob nanigans. This is a Minovi spot in the if you have any requests. Great. That's a great basic version. Um, however, let's go ahead and check out some other options. Uh, so, introduction. Uh, I like having these little sections. So, we're going to come take a look at that. Okay, so uh, you can specify a size to make it bigger, the color, and introduction. Great. Uh, also, we'll want one for installation. Installation and startup. So, I like bolded lists. Who doesn't? So, we're going to yank this and see what we want to incorporate. You will get a folder called Cube Plugins. Move this folder into your Documents, Little Rings Online, Plugins folder. Or, if you prefer, you may use Motro Plugin Compendium to do the installation. Not actually true yet. I need to ask Lunar Water to add it uh, and remove the old Festival Buddy entry, but uh, it'll be there soon. I should probably write that down. Ask Lunar Water to swap you know, the P2 and the Motro Plugin Compendium. Great. Okay, I like that wording better. Uh, language, that can go into the introduction. Okay, what else uh, do I like? Introduction, um, how do you launch the thing? So, to load the plugin, use the game's built-in plugin manager. Yes. Now, sadly, there's just this link to an imgur. I should probably fix that at some point, but it's still there. Um, click that, then choose system, and then plugin manager as a shortcut. You can also type slash plugins space manager in your chat window. Thank you for calling out the lack of a close. That's funny. All 
All right, when the Pokemon Manager opener opens, find Deep Tracker in the list on the left side. Boy, I gotta not do that. Find Festival Buddy 2 in the list on the left side. Click Load to load the plugin. If you'd like the plugin to load automatically each time you log in, choose your character's name and the automatically load for plugin. Uh, pull down menu. Okay. Known issues. I'll add that once there are some. <laughs> uh, and then revision history. Uh, I like having that at the bottom. All right, re revision history. And we're just going to have a bulge bulleted list here. All right, and just the date. 0620. Version uh, 2.0.1. Sure. Initial release of Festival Buddy 2. Awesome. Don't need to worry about the longer revision history that uh, D-Track has just been around for a while, and I'm reluctant to delete these things because, you know, history. Okay, so we have a te uh, textual introduction. Awesome, electric companion. Uh, don't need some of this. You're all the original. That's a great point. Let's see. Festival buddy. Oh, hey, festival buddy. updated version of the original. Now, how do we do URL links? I don't know, but it's over here. Great. Of the original something. So this is going to be URL equals. URL equals that of the original festival buddy by Galu had. Great point, Alanibus. An updated version of the original Festival Buddy by Galahad. More complicated festivals like Midsummer have. Currently, Midsummer have a quick guide you can use to keep all the interwoven quests of Venus Tirith. You can use to keep track of all the interwoven quests of Venus Tirith. Now, Midsummer is a more complicated festival. It has, now has, a quick guide you can use to keep ta track of all of the interwoven quests of Minister. Great. Blah, blah, blah. So, anything else that I wanted to add here? Um, installation setup, no issues, none of that. Uh, oh, I do want a link to the release notes are here, uh, but I'm not ready to use them yet. Release notes are here. We'll be on the forums shortly. Awesome. Okay, so we have the literature interface description done. That means we're ready to uh, package up these files into a zip and send them on their way. First of all, let's make sure we have a clean directory. We don't, um, but all of this is uh, version 2.0.1 artifacts. Oh, we should also uh, 
uh, double check our dot plugin file. So let's grab this Festival Buddy 2 version 2.0.1. Great. Festival Buddy 2 is based on Galahad's Festival Buddy as updates for festivals introduced after 2014. Great. Oh! And then the last thing I want to consult was the extended support. Oh, I do like that Hobnanigans image. We'll see. Um, add support for anniversary fireworks and brie quest, Hobnanigans and far Farmer's Fair quests. I'll have to be good enough. Um, okay, 2.1 artifacts, so images, description, that. The alt window, we don't want that, so we're going to get rid of it. And options, we don't want that. Okay, so we can package this up as a zip file. Let's get going. All right, so I like to have a separate place to do this. I have a plugin along releases, great. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the beta directory that I had before and just rename This is Festival Buddy 2 version 2.0.1. Awesome. And what we wanna do is start pulling stuff over. This is a pretty informal way of doing it. Uh, automated scripts or an automated process would be uh, probably a better way to go if this was, was a more serious thing. But you know, there's a trade-off in how much time do you spend automating it versus how much time does it really take to go ahead and copy this over. Uh, or in fact, do a um, directory comparison, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and do here. So Festival Buddy plugin. We want to make sure it's 2.0.1. Awesome. Um, and in Festival Buddy. So we don't want the .vs code. We don't want docs. We don't want source files. We don't want website. But we do want other things. So we can see drag bar. That's the fix. That makes sense. We're going to pull that over. Uh, actually, we're going to go ahead and only look at the diffs here. So quick guides. These are the string changes we did earlier. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and bring those over. And anything else. Uh, awesome, this is uh, the plugin name change that we did. Plugin name. More plugin name. Um, let's make sure that debug options is false. Excellent. That was the reorganization that we looked at. And unload plugin. That was supposed to not come in. You know what? I'm actually going to delete it from over here. Perfect. So we're going to bring these over. And then everything is there. Our to-do file doesn't go. The website files, the source files, the... What on earth is docs? I forgot about those. Okay, cool. Um, apparently I already had a, a folder, but I've settled on a website for no good reason, and so that's a mix there. None of it says, what copy tool are you using? This is actually beyond compare, and it's meant to do file comparisons. I also just find it to be a very spiffy directory comparison and copying things over uh, kind of a tool. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to see, hey, what are the differences between these two files? Uh, it'll go ahead and, and put them up side by side. It's a, it's a, it's a diff tool. Uh, so this is different. So it'll highlight any line that has differences. Uh, you select that line, it'll go ahead and, and do a character by character uh, comparison at the bottom. It also knows that white space isn't necessarily Im important for coders. So you can just say, I don't care about white space and it won't even bring it up. Okay. Um, that being said, uh, this is Beyond Compare. You can get it at, apparently there's a new version available. Scootersoftware.com slash download.php. 
you can find beyond com compare at this. Awesome. Great question. Yes, uh, I do like using beyond compare. I'm sure there are other um, uh, files that can also do the job. This one supports three-way merges, which are an important concept in modern source control, maybe all source control. Okay, so we have, um, just organize these a little bit. On the left side is the actual cube plugins directory. On the right side is the 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 two ship bucket. We can see uh, that the dot plugin file is fine. When we can expand this, we can see that the only things missing are the things that we don't want to ship. So that's good. And that means this is ready to go. Now we want to make a zip file, and the zip file should, at its top level, have cube plugins in it, so it extracts correctly for the Lotro plugin compendium. So what we want to do is we want to come on out and we want to make ourselves a zip file. Just an empty one is fine. Uh, in Windows you can just do new, compress to zip folder, uh, and just make sure it's named correctly. In this case, Fessel Buddy 2, version 2.0.1. .0 and then we can just drag in cube plugins over there, and that's the structure you want. You want zip file. Within that, you want the top level folder inside plugins, in this case it's cube plugins, then inside that you want your Fessel Buddy, uh, in this case your, your plugin directory and your dot plugin file. If you also have a dot plugin compendium file, you would uh, put it in the same place as your dot plugin file. This uh, plugin doesn't have any external dependencies and so the default one that's going to be generated is fine and I'll get that added in later. Okay, so we have a zip file. So we have all the artifacts we need to do this release. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. So when you're at Lotro interface, on the home page, there is an upload and update. Oh, I should see what category this is in. Standalone plugins other. Right. Lenibus says, have the compendium code. Uh, Lenibus, I'm not sure if I understand your question completely. But I think what you're asking is, what is the that file? And the answer is there's going to be a parallel file to the dot plugin. Uh, so we have the, the dtracker.plugin, and there's also going to be a dtracker.plugin compendium. And this is, can be automatically generated by plugin compendium, but it's going to have the ID of your plugin, and that's going to be uh, assigned for the, the unique uh, plugin number. Yep. Uh, and then it'll automatically detect name and version and author. Uh, it'll automatically detect these from the lotrointerface.com on the first time if it's not there. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that and commit it in just so it doesn't have to do that again. Um, but because our plugin does not depend on anything else, I've removed the dependency on the turbine files, the default file will be the correct file. So it won't hurt, shouldn't hurt us, that we're missing it for this first release. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and upload new interface add-on. This is a Lotro um, something something. Standalone other. Sounds good. Now it is possible that something else might actually be good, but I don't see anything that says festivals, so I'm gonna go with other. Uh, if you're looking to, dear, oh dear. Um, okay, upload new. So, they want a zip file. Fantastic, we have one of those. Let's go ahead and scroll on down. We have Festival Buddy 2, not the beta one, the one we just put together today. Awesome. I guess I should see if anyone on my Discord server found a bug before uh, <laughs> before launching this. I have it turned off while streaming because I, I don't need notifications. And... No, okay. Um, okay, so. Uh, choose file, done. Attach images. Uh, when you do this, when you click manage image, you will get another window that pops up. I find this very disconcerting. Also, it wants captions for these images, which I completely forgot about. Let's go ahead and fix that here. So uh, in images, we want to go ahead and have a new file, captions. And for each of the images, um, it's nice to know. So main window, uh, what's the caption? Two, that's going to be the uh, barter window, maybe. 
Uh, what's that? Three, uh, the quick guide window, and four, the alts window. So the question is, you know, what do we want to uh, have show up down here? Uh, and the answer is, it's on us. Festival Buddy didn't give us uh, much to work with in that department. The main window of Festi Festival Buddy 2. Little Redhead wanted me to call it Festivus, uh, but do a name change. Uh, well, she proposed as a silly idea, changing it to Festivus, but uh, I, I didn't want the, uh, the sticker shock, as it were. Um, a window showing what you can buy at the festival. At a festival. Quick guide window. A series of steps to complete Midsummer Festival. Uh, quickly. Midsummer quests at Minas Tirith. Quickly. Okay. And whatever this one is, Alt's window. The status of um, the state of your alts. Currency and currency and effects uh, and timers maybe I don't know great thing about this is we can change it later so version 2.0.1 and then if I change this I can I can kind of have a historical record for what the captions are as well cool okay so the main window of festival buddy that's not the right place actually it could be but I'll upload it from the uh, from the original. All right, so Festival Buddy Two uh, website images and I should really have named these. So Festival Buddy Two one main window, uh, so it can correspond with that file. Two barter window. Uh, three quick guide and four alts. Great. So, buddy, main window of Festival Buddy 2. Upload. Awesome. We want to go ahead and do that again, this time with number two. I want to show you what you can buy at the festival. Number three. Series of steps to complete Midsummer quests at Minas Tirith quickly. I've kind of ignored all the outlying quests uh, at this time. But it was just uh, more than I could deal with on this release. All right, alts. State of your alts, currency, and timers. Great. Um, so when you are done putting in the images, you just hit the close this window button. And as I've mentioned before, this um, doesn't feel comfortable to me to just like dismiss that window, but you can always relaunch it and see that yes, they are there. It's fine. Okay, interface title. Festival Buddy 2. File version, this is 2.0.1, and your description. And this is where we can take advantage of already having that description. So this is the literature interface description. Just select all, copy paste, and you're done. Allow updates and add-ons. So this is a personal decision you get to make. Do you want people to be able to attach a patch to your plugin or not? Personally, I always check yes, because I think that's a really cool thing that people can go ahead and easily associate a patch with a plugin. Um, if you don't do that, sorry, if you do that, then your plugin patch will show up uh, listed under the patch and add-on list below the interface information. So if you go to Festival Buddy, you can see that I had a patch, Festival Buddy Extended Support. Awesome, right there you can click on it and decide whether or not you want it. If you click no for this answer, people can still make patches. People can still say, oh, this is a patch for this other thing, but they can't explicitly link it in that way, and so it doesn't show up in the list. And I just don't think that's a very uh, user-friendly experience for people who, you know, maybe want the plugin patch, but they're not uh, very fluent in plugins, so they don't realize that they have to go searching for it, or, uh, oh, is this really for it? So I like to, I'd like to hit yes, but you know, if you have a reason to hit no, that's fine. And then rules and guidelines, you should definitely read these 
um, before you proceed. Uh, so, must attach a zip file and images. Include a help file, it's uh, difficult to install. Well, we just put that in the textual uh, description above. Include what it is, yep. Executable files are not allowed, cool. Don't include additional stuff inside the inside the zip files. Did not do that. Um, all right, uploading this, you certify to your knowledge, blah, blah, blah. So we didn't put any viruses in it, we don't think. Lemma says, so they can't add source to your download, patch uh, downloaded separately. The, the, uh, the the yes no button here just determines whether people can um, well it perhaps implies that you don't want people patching your plugins but the, the the mechanistic thing that happens is that when you post a patch you can't um, say this is patching that specific plugin so it doesn't get associated that isn't to say you can't post a patch and say it is associated as far as I'm concerned but it won't show up in that uh, patch list and the interface for uploading the plugin won't let you uh, tie the two together, associate the two together. Um, yeah, it will only show uh, people, uh, show these files other people submit for your interface as optional downloads on your file info page. Um, it will be enabled on interfaces that have been abandoned or not updated for length of time automatically. So uh, if you go away for a couple of years, it may not matter. Um, so I think this is. Uh, I don't know if the intent is to say, oh, if you hit no, then people shouldn't be writing patches, but mechanistically it does stop them from attaching their patch to your page. I, I don't know, hopefully that's a clear answer. Um, all right, conform to the end user license agreement. It's free, you're not uh, pay, you know, having, charging people for it. You're the copyright holder of all documents or have permission to submit them. I did grab that one image from the Lotro Wiki, but anything you submit to the Lotro Wiki is, I believe, uh, um, oh, I forget which licensing it is, but I believe it's available for reuse. Also, it's uh, attributed in the README. Um, the file is not harmful. I, well, no guarantees, but hopefully not. Uh, free from advertisements, promotions, or nag screens. No time limit, free to use. Description accurately reflects the contents of the file. Your upload file conforms to the rules listed above. Do you agree? I do. Awesome. So whenever you upload a file or upload an update to a plugin, you're going to first be uh, sent to this screen, which says they may or may not approve it. It could say, take some time. They might not tell you if they don't approve it. Uh, all of these things. This is You will see this screen every time you um, upload a, uh, or update a plugin over at lotrointerface.com. I, I think it's fine to read through it, uh, but basically uh, reasons why they might not accept your submission. If you go back to the Lotro interface page and go to list my interfaces, you're going to see your plugin with a big old pending on it. Um, this will stay this way uh, until someone has a chance to approve it, I think. I don't know the back end of lotrointerface.com, but it will take some amount of time and then it will go from pending to updated. If you're updating an existing plugin, people can still look at the page, they can still update older versions of the plugin, they just can't update this present version of the plugin. Uh, and while a plugin's in this state, I think the Lotro plugin compendium doesn't do well with downloading it, so watch out for that. Uh, but that's it. Uh, we have just put it out there. Sometime in the next zero to all of the minutes, this will switch to updated and then people will be able to uh, download it. Every once in a while, I'll just sit and refresh and refresh, and it's like, come on! But no. Okay. Um, any other questions? Oh, I think it's raining. Any other questions about the release process, what it looks like, what's going on here? Uh, oh, neat. Rendering. I have an explanation video of how to use the uh, the Midsummer Guide, and it finally finished rendering. So I guess it wasn't too bad. Uh, come on! <sighs> All right, I will stop looking at that. Um, so sometime in the upcoming hours, that'll finish, and people will be able to download it, which is very cool. Uh, in the meantime, I'll be messaging Lunar Water to uh, see if the Lotro Plugin Compendium can switch Festival Buddy versions, uh, and I'll be excited uh, to see how people like it. Okay, 
Minimize some windows. Minimize some windows. Done with that. Okay, so we have reached a, I think, a logical conclusion for the end of the stream, and also I'm over on time. So, uh, while any last minute thoughts, minutes, questions, concerns are rolling in, let's go ahead and bring this to a reasonable stopping point. I'll go ahead and write over to the Mumak and Keep just in case someone is typing. Planibus says, thanks, you are welcome. Well, for anyone out there who does use this, I, uh, hope it uh, helps demystify Midsummer in Minas Tirith a little bit. There's a lot of interwoven quests that uh, take you to similar areas, and I think I understand the city a lot better now, having been back and forth throughout it for all of these quests. But if you're trying to just do one quest at a time, you're going to be revisiting the same areas over and over, and it just is going to feel like you're spending a lot of time traveling. <laughs> Skagosi says, looking forward to using it. Excellent! Is it done yet? Okay. <laughs> so, if you're using this, um, I, I, or rather, Little Redhead, because I got her to do a voiceover, uh, we go into this a little bit uh, more during in the overview video, but if you don't have five minute milestones, it's okay. You don't, you don't need them, it's very helpful to have it, but as uh, any time that you would you be directed to uh, use a milestone or suggested to use a milestone, you can just run to the nearest stable master. You can use one of your um, other travel skills that gets you near a, fire, uh, a stable master that can go to um, Minas Tirith. The far ranging stable master in housing is the most obvious. So if you have a personal house, that gets you one. If you have a kinship house and a kinship member's house, that gets you the four that you need. So it says it's also showing as new on Lifter interface for you. Oh, okay, let's go on over. Is it? Why can't I see it? Okay, well, maybe America got it first. <laughs> so you don't need five minute milestones. I think they're they're really nice to have on, on like your main character and they're reasonably affordable depending on how many Lutra points you get from uh, going out and, and doing deeds in the world. Uh, or if you have spare money to throw at the game. But uh, if you don't have them, it's totally fine. An hour long milestone, an hour long, uh, hour -long uh, cooldown on personal house, a kinship house, kinship member's house, that's all fine. And anywhere else that can give you swift travel here as well, maybe South Bree, don't know, uh, could also be a workaround for that. Oh, okay. So we're doing the Unhelpful Hounds. I personally have had good experience finding a dog that runs through the south area here. Like that one. Hey, there it is. So that's what I tend to do, is I'll stand over here, I'll look for a dog or a hound that's coming on the south side and most of the time it is it. Not always, but as we saw, it just came over and nipped next to, or um, uh, turned next to the worried woman. So worst case, you can just stand here and interrogate each dog as it comes up to the worried woman. And like, do you have the ring? Do you have the ring? Uh, you don't have to run around the plaza. If it doesn't come along the south and run up to the worried woman, in my experience, it's not gonna have the ring anyway. Ah, uh, Zimba says the page is showing, but the file is still unavailable. Ah, uh, <laughs> no worries. And I was like, come on, come on, come on, come on. But if I recall, the very first time I, I release any plugin, it takes a little bit longer than updates do because every file is new instead of just uh, what's different. Oh, right. We're continuing on this tier. Wedding supplies. Wedding supplies are usually pretty easy, but if there's other people in the area grabbing the wedding supplies, it can, it can be a little uh, disconcerting. It's like, but I wanted that wedding supply. Okay, then it says, the latest version of this file is currently awaiting approval from a file admin, and that can take some time. You can download a previous older version from the archive, except no, you can't. There is no older version. Well, except for Festival Buddy 1. Pending. Surely refreshing every two minutes is a uh, normal thing to do. Honoring healers is another one that some people will skip, either because they don't want to get their way to the houses of healing uh, remedies. 
uh, or they just have trouble doing the healers inside. But I found once I figured out the path for each healer, <laughs> um, for honoring healers, uh, once I drew out the path for each healer, although unfortunately the map is rotated 90 degrees because the actual math, uh, map is very vertical and this area for maps is very horizontal. Um, so the maps are rotated. Uh, you, you come in on the east, and east is on the south of this map. My apologies for that. But once I figured out the actual routes, it got a lot less confusing about uh, the, the route I wanted to take. If you're the first person who's been in there for a while, then it feels like the healers all kind of start at their default location. And the default location for Magenta is kind of right next to where you run in to meet Red. So you run in and you meet Red, and the Magenta's right there, Green's right there, and then you just have to find Blue. Cyan and yellow are always on the west side, so once you found the first four, you just go tag the last two and you're done. So, setting myself on follow and just, you know, watching them carve out these paths and documenting it, suddenly it, uh, I find I'm spending much less time in there trying to find healers and much more time just running up to them saying, here you go, thanks, and running off. <laughs> Zinli says, if that one healer isn't standing on the bed hiding in the corner too. Absolutely. Magenta's path is, I want to say wonky. The, Mag the magenta path is rough. Uh, they collide with objects. They, they walk on furniture. They walk over the banister. Uh, it, it could, uh, I feel like that healer just hasn't been thanked enough. They're very sad. They're not watching where they're going. They need more thanks. Uh, but until then, absolutely, when they get to the end of the path, they, they walk onto the bed and then they just sort of stand there for a while. Uh, and as you said, it's in the corner, so if you aren't prepared for that, uh, that's, that's something. I think uh, in the, the overview video, I also had a uh, little redhead in the script. There was a note about, yeah, Magenta will sometimes just stand on the bed in that room. Because, yeah, that's... Uh, again, it... It seems like that's if other people have been in the area recently and, and the healers are active on their paths, you're a lot more likely to see that. If no one's been in the area for a little while and you go in, it feels like the NPCs kind of uh, re reset themselves to a starting position. Uh, and it takes Magenta a while to get into that room and get stuck. All right, this is another bottom of the ramp, so we're uh, dismounting early. Uh, still pending. All right, I feel like I have got more than I'm going to uh, get done here before the end. Little Redhead proposes that for Festival Buddy 3, it's just Buddy, Buddy, Buddy. I would kind of imagine that if there is another Festival Buddy, it'll be because someone else has picked up the torch after, you know, I've stopped for whatever reason doing uh, Lord of the Rings online plugins, uh, which is which is the nature of the plugin community. And one of the things I think is really neat is that there's a continuity, especially if you look at something like Titan Bar, which has been developed by uh, the the core plugin and patches for it have been developed by maybe half a dozen people over the last decade. Uh, and you know, every time someone's like, "Oh, no one's really working on that," and I'd love for it to do X, Y, or Z, you get a new person who's who's contributing. Uh, to something that we can all use, that we can all uh, mit, uh, have a altered experience in Lotro uh, using it. So I, I think it's a, it's a neat um, maybe feature, not a bug, that people can take up the mantle for a little while, make, make plugins better, add more features, make it do more things, and then they can move on and do other things with their life and someone else can, can pick that up. Lua is a very accessible programming language, so you don't have to have a lot of prior experience to be able to dig in and see, hey, how does it do this one thing? Can I make it do it slightly differently? Uh, the code's all available on the interface. There's nothing hidden. Uh, and, you know, people can write code more clearly or less clearly, but at a certain point, in order to set the title of a window to be text, you have to call the set text function on a window. And if you can find that in the code, you can figure out where that's happening, then you can change how it's happening. All right, Hungry Guard, are you going to be the last guard that I feed? Well, okay, you too. Arr, you're killing me.
So apparently it is plugin 1218 though, so that's cool. It's quite possible to get that keg on the way in, but I have trouble navigating uh, to do it and, and not get stuck on things. So I tend to just go ahead and run up to the stage first, and then on my way back out, it's not too far out of the way to just duck up these stairs and have a clear shot at it. And then if uh, if you ever are getting stuck on the kegs or on the table, you can just run around the far side of the table and jump over. Uh, that's a doesn't seem to, be, to get me stuck at all. All right, I'm gonna go turn this into cereal or cereal and call that good. Side effect of getting so streamlined by having the quick guide here instead of having to refer to a different page and be like, oh, where was I? What was I doing next? Is that I start actually catching up to my computer's ability to render Minas Tirith. Uh, the computers are really normally pretty good about it, but if I'm just on the ball doing this, 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 uh, eventually it's like, oh, I forgot to render that floor over there. And then it catches up eventually. Um, and I definitely wasn't noticing having that nearly so much when I was having to manually uh, kind of figure out where, I, where am I on this guide and what am I doing next. Uh, so the quick guide is definitely speeding me up. All right, we finished our artistic direction for Borlock of Rimen. That's a free turn in. Okay. Keep refreshing. Keep refreshing and it's still just pending. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Well, um, that was awesome. Today we've gone ahead and prepped uh, the Festival Buddy 2 for release. It's, uh, tracking down a few little bugs here and there or a few little improvements that'll just make the release that much smoother. Uh, and it's out, so at some point the site will actually approve it, fingers crossed, uh, and we'll be good to go. So that's all we're going to do today. Thanks so much for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins and this release of Festival Buddy 2. It was very exciting. I do hope to see you here next week for more wacky shenanigans, and until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.